Greetings, gentle listeners, and welcome to the Ohio Shakespeare Quarantine Radio Program, where we produce original works based on classic stories for your at-home entertainment. Grab your quarantine pal, your adult beverage of choice, or a glass of Ovaltine for the kiddos, and settle in for some old-fashioned radio play spookums. Tonight's classic tale of horror is sure to chill you to the bones, even on this hot summer evening. The classic story, originally by W.W. W. Jacobs, was adapted for our radio program tonight by Ohio Shakespeare's own Tess Burglar. It is sure to remind us all to be very, very careful what we wish for. Joining us tonight from the Ohio Shakespeare Festival Company are Dean Kutris as the voice of Mr. White, Maya Nicholson as the voice of Mrs. White, Schlee Snyder as the voice of Herbert White, Jeffrey Darling as the voice of Sergeant Major Morris, Harold Darko as the voice of the mysterious man, and your narrator for this evening will be Madeline Hayes. And now, gentle listeners, before we begin our tale, a word from our advertising partners. Gee, Mabel, my hands are so dry and cracked from all of this hand washing, but yours look so soft. What's your secret? Well, it's no secret, Alma. I use the Macbeth Goat's Milk Soap. Yes, that's right, the Macbeth. It's like Macbeth, but except this one actually gets that damn spa out. That creamy soap with goat's milk and shea butter gets my hands nice and clean without drying them out. Wow, Mabel, that sure sounds swell. But you know I enjoy an added element of whimsy in the lavatory. Washing my hands ten times a day can make me feel like a real drip. But Alma, each bar of creamy soap is stamped with a quotation from your favorite books. The Macbeth has soaps with quotes from Shakespeare, Jane Austen, Sherlock Holmes, and more. Plus other great products like lotion, face masks, and tinted lip balms to add a little zing to your jitterbug. Well, Mabel, that sounds like a real humdinger. Where can I get these marvelous soaps? They come directly to you via the postal mail service. The information is coming through the telegraph now. Just give me a moment to translate this Morse code. Ah, just tell your operator to connect you to www.themacbath.com. That's T-H-E-M-A-C B-A-T-H dot com. Huh, that's a mighty funny address. Doesn't even have a street name. It's newfangled. I think you're supposed to yell it from your front porch. Well, I think I've got it. The Macbeth Goat's Milk Soap. Keeping your skin soft and clean with a touch of whimsy. Try it today. Gentle listeners, without further ado, Ohio Shakespeare Festival presents W.W. Jacobs' The Monkey's Paw. Without, the night was cold and wet, but in the small parlor of Laburnum Villa, the blinds were drawn and the fire burned brightly. Father and son were at chess. Arc at the wind. I'm listening. Incredible, isn't it? Don't try to distract me. It won't help you. I'm not trying to distract you. I'm actually saying the wind is going mad. I hear it. I can't remember a storm like this for a long time past now. Mm-hmm. Stop trying to distract him, James. I'm not trying to distract him. You're telling me this storm doesn't impress you? I'm saying that your chess playing doesn't impress me. Check. Damn. I told you there was no need to put your king in peril like that. You did, you did. But I'm not out of ideas yet. Ha! There. Interesting move, Pop. Risky, though. Yes, yes. Thank you both. What time is it? Half past seven or so? That late. Do you think our guest is still coming, James? I should hardly think that he'd come tonight. Not in this weather. Checkmate. (laughs) Vested by my own offspring. I'm finally old. No, darling, that's not true. Yeah, Pop, you've been old for a long time now. There is no earthly possibility that he's still coming. It's the worst of living so far out. Of all the beastly, slushy, out-of-the-way places to live in, this is the worst. 
Here he goes. Pathways a bog. The road's a torrent. I don't know what people are thinking about. I suppose because only two houses in the road are let, they think it doesn't matter. They put a brick road in on Grant Street, but here, nothing. Never mind, dear. Perhaps you'll win the next one. I'm not upset about the chess game. Good. Me either. That's the gate. There he is after all. Oh, quick. Get the door. He must be freezing. Come in from the deluge. Thanks kindly. Oh, please come right in to the fire. We're so pleased you came in spite of the weather. Darling, this is Sergeant Major Morris. Pleasure to finally meet you, ma'am. Likewise. I feel as though I've already known you. I feel the same. And this is my son, Herbert. Yes, father has told your war stories so many times. I'm fairly certain I could tell them myself now. Oh, sit, sit. Make yourself comfortable. Whiskey? Please. Make it two? <laughs> ah, no. Just a little? No, son, not one drop. Now. Oh. You have a lovely family, which comes as no surprise. We're flattered. Now, Morris, tell me all about your travels. It's been years, old friend. Decades. Yes, India? I'm terribly jealous. I wish to travel the world someday. Be careful what you wish for. Yes, but first dinner. If I'm hungry, I'm sure you're starving. The family spent a pleasant evening reminiscing over Mr. White and Sergeant Major Morris's epic youthful tales. Mr. White kept his friend's glass full throughout. At the third glass, Morris's eyes got brighter, and he reluctantly at first began to talk about his stint in India, the little family circle regarding with eager interest this visitor from distant parts. As he squared his broad shoulders in the chair and spoke of wild scenes and doughty deeds, of wars and plagues and strange peoples. Twenty-one years of it. One dinner is not enough to cover twenty-one years of adventures. When he went away, he was a slip of a youth. Now look at him. Oh, he don't look to have taken much harm. Flattery will get you everywhere, Mrs. White. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Herbert, when you begin your worldly travels, I might just follow you. I'd like to go to India myself, just to look around a bit, you know? Excellent, Pop. You can pay for my room and board. Better where you are. No, truly. I, I should like to see those old temples and fakirs and jugglers. Oh, what was it you started telling me the other day about a, a monkey's paw or something, Morris? Monkey's paw? How terribly disturbing. Nothing. Leastways, nothing worth hearing. Well, now we have to hear. You can't just bring up a monkey's paw and not tell us about it. Well, it's just a bit of what you might call magic, perhaps. Oh, yes. We definitely need to hear about the monkey's paw. Hold on. I'll refill your glass and then you can tell us all about it. This is so much better than our usual dinner parties. Would you hush? To look at it, it's just an ordinary little paw. Dried to a mummy. Here, have a look. Oh, excellent. I'd hardly call that ordinary. Can I see it? Oh, I suppose. Can't do much harm now. And what is there so special about it? It had a spell put on it by an old fakir, a very holy man. <laughs> a spell, Morris? Not like you to believe in magic. Truly, though, magic... He wanted to show that fate ruled people's lives and that those who interfered with it did so to their sorrow. He put a spell on it so that three separate men could each have three wishes from it. <laughs> huh. Well, why don't you have three, sir? Sounds like excellent fun. I have. And did you really have the three wishes granted? I did. And? It most decidedly was not excellent fun. And has anybody else wished? The first man had his three wishes, yes. What did he wish for? I don't know what the first two wishes were. What was the third wish for? Death. Truly. That's how I got the poor. If you've had your three wishes, it's no good to you now then, Morris. Why, why do you keep it? What do you keep it for? Fancy, I suppose. Or so that I don't forget. Why don't you sell it? It has caused enough mischief already. Besides, people won't buy. They think it's a fairy tale, some of them. And those who do think anything of it want to try it first 
and pay me afterward. If you could have another three wishes, would you have them? I don't know. I don't know. I... Wait! Morris tossed the paw directly into the fire. Mr. White, without thinking, reached his hand directly into the flames and grabbed it. Oh, James, wow. be <sighs> careful! Better to let it burn. If, if you don't want it, Morris, uh, give it to me. Pop, come now. It's just a rotten old paw. I won't. I threw it on the fire. If you keep it, don't blame me for what happens. Pitch it on the fire again like a sensible man. How do you do it? No, friend. I won't tell you. Destroy it. It's all right. I'm, I'm sure I can figure it out. No. Don't toy with it. W why then tell me so I don't guess? James, let's just drop the whole thing. Hold it up in your right hand and wish aloud. But I warn you of the consequences. <laughs> well, sounds like something out of a, a Arabian night. Oh, don't you think you might wish for four pair of hands for me? So I don't have to do all these dishes single-handedly. I'd love to not help you with the dishes. All right, then. Stop. If you must wish, wish for something sensible. And think about how you say it. Pop, let's move on. I, you're right. Don't worry, Morris. I'll take care of the paw. And I won't be lighthearted about it. You can set your mind at rest. I wish I would like to do just that. All right, dessert. I've made lemon cakes. Excellent. Mom's lemon cakes are easily the most impressive dessert in the county. Probably the world. You'll be the deciding vote, sir, since you're so well-traveled. Mr. White dropped the paw back in his pocket and smiled reassuringly to his friend, who did not return the smile. In the business of dessert and hot coffee, the talisman was partly forgotten, and the atmosphere cooled back to the easy quality it had during dinner. An hour later, Morris said goodbye and headed back into the night, just in time for him to catch the last train. Woo-wee! If the tale about the monkey's paw is not more truthful than those he has been telling us, we shan't make much out of it. <laughs> Gone a little daft, hasn't he? Did you give him anything for it, James? I feel poorly for having upset him about it. A trifle. He didn't want it, but I made him take it. And he pressed me again to throw it away. Poor man. Seems to have been through a lot. Why, we're going to be rich and, and famous and happy. Oh, horrible. Oh, stop. Wish to be an emperor, father, to begin with. Then you can't be henpecked by mother anymore. I do not henpeck. James, tell him I don't. <laughs> I don't know what to wish for, and that's a fact. Seems to me I've got all I want. Oh, Pop. Oh, I love you, darling. Hmm. If you only cleared the house, you'd be quite happy, wouldn't you? No more debt? Well, wish for 200 pounds, then that'll just do it. All right. Not a bad idea. Wait! I'll set the mood. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I wish for 200 pounds. <gasps> James, J are, are you all right? I just fell over uh, out of nowhere. Jeez, Pop, I was just joking around. It was just the piano. It moved. What? As I wished, it twisted in my hand like a snake. Are you sure? And didn't you hear that sound? Uh, it was me on the piano. No, 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 the crash. The loud one. No, it was just me on the piano, goofing around. I didn't mean to scare you so badly. Here, let me help you up, dear. I think we both have had a few more glasses than we meant to. I suppose. Well, I don't see the money, and I bet I never shall. It must have been your fancy, James. Let's forget about it and go to bed. You're right. Never mind. There's no harm done. But it gave me a shock all the same. Oh, clearly. Good night, Pop. Good night. Oh, but do be careful. I expect you'll find the cash tied up in a big 
bag in the middle of your bed and some horrible monster squatting up on top of the wardrobe watching you as you pocket your ill-gotten gains. <laughs> Herbert, good night. Love you. The family retired, leaving the monkey's paw on the mantle above the dying fire. This concludes Act 1 of our broadcast. The following advertisements are from local small businesses, all run by Ohio Shakespeare Festival company members. Jackalope Park Fair, Jackalope Park Fair, get what you need at the Jackalope Park Fair. You want to shop small and don't want to go to a mall? We shouldn't be going outside, so you ask yourself, where is there a guide? Look no further than Jackalope Arts, your handmade virtual artisan mart. Soaps? Ceramics, apparel and jewelry design, cocktail mixers, jerky, artwork, everything is simply sublime. Just take a seat while you peek at the Jackalope Arts Virtual Mart. Let's navigate these times and spend our dimes at the Jackalope Arts Virtual Mart. Find it all at jackalopeartfair.com slash virtual market. That's jackalopeartfair.com slash virtual market. Jackalope Art Fair, Jackalope Art Fair, get what you need at the Jackalope Art Fair. Do you love theater? Do you miss theater and want an opportunity to be able to support it even while theaters across America are shut due to COVID-19? Then let us introduce you to Partners for Theater. They are a group of people who want to help live theater thrive now more than ever. Go to partnersfortheater.org to learn more and join them. That's partnersfortheater.org. Become a voting member of this organization for only $100. That's partnersfortheater.org. We now return for the conclusion of The Monkey's Paw. brightness of the autumn sun next morning, as it streamed over the breakfast table, Mr. White laughed at his fears. There was an air of prosaic wholesomeness about the room which it had lacked on the previous night, and the dirty, shriveled little paw was pitched on the sideboard with a carelessness which betokened no great belief in its virtues. Good morning. So glad to see you survived the night. Oh, You weren't gobbled up by a beastie who left us 200 pounds in your stead. Doesn't seem like it. Because I was worried. Herbert. I was. Could barely sleep. Eat your breakfast. I suppose all us old soldiers are the same. A little bit daft and full of stories. The idea of our listening to such nonsense. (laughs) How could magic wishes be granted in these days? And if they could, how could 200 pounds hurt you? Might drop out of the sky and fall on your head. It might. I'd stay inside today if I were you, Pop. Well, Morris said the things happen so naturally that you might, if you so wished, attribute it to coincidence. Probably because it is a coincidence. Well, don't break into the money before I come back from work today. I'm afraid it'll turn you into a mean, avaricious man and we shall have to disown you. Yes, and then keep the money for ourselves. I'll spend it entirely on new handbags, just to spite you. You ha. wouldn't dare. <laughs> Have a lovely day at the factory, dear. That sentence makes no sense. It's a factory. I don't think it's possible to have a lovely day. Have a satisfactory day at the factory, son. I shall. Make some lovely money at the factory today, dear. Now that's more like it. Till later. <laughs> He gets that sarcasm from you, you know. I know. 
I'm very proud. Mrs. White watched through the kitchen window as her son walked briskly down the road. And then she returned to the breakfast dishes. It was a normal day spent at the White home. She scurried to the door at the postman's knock. No one expected checks in the mail. She frowned at Sergeant Majors and her husband's bibulous habits when she found how empty the whiskey bottle was. She gardened with Mr. White and tidied and read a book. And soon the afternoon was almost evening and she was setting three places for dinner. Herbert will have some more of his funny remarks, I expect, when he comes home and we are no richer. I dare say. Beer. Yes, please. <laughs> but for all that, the thing moved in my hand. That I'll swear to. You thought it did. I say it did. There was no thought about it. I had just... What's the matter? Darling, what are you looking at? Come to the window. What is it? Well, there's a man outside. What's he doing? Just standing there, looking at our house. Do we know him? I don't think so. What's he doing now? Just standing, looking. Like, maybe he's making his mind up whether or not to walk through the gate? He's well-dressed. Look at that silk hat. What's he doing on our street? Oh, look, he's leaving. Or, or, no. Never mind, he's coming back. Looks like he made up his mind. Oh, help me get this apron off. Oh, ugh, uh, the door is bolted and I can't reach it. Will you get the door? I'll get it. You make some coffee. All right. Hello. Can I help you? Uh, yes. Uh, are you Mr. James White? I am. Won't you come in? Oh, um, uh, yes, please. Hello. This is my wife. Can we offer you a cup of coffee? Yes, I mean, I suppose. Oh, please sit down. You're quite welcome here. Yes. Oh, so sorry for the state of the room. We were entertaining an old friend last night, you understand. And we certainly weren't expecting any guests today. You caught us in our old gardening clothes, I'm afraid. Oh, here's that coffee. Thank you. Now, how can we help you? Oh, do you need sugar? Uh, no, no, I, I'm sorry. I was asked to call. I come from Ma and Megan's. Oh, that's where Herbert works. I know, dear. Is there anything the matter? Where's Herbert? What is it? What, has, has anything happened? Oh, there, there, let's not jump to conclusions. You've not brought up bad news, I'm sure, sir. I'm... Sorry. Oh, dear God. What, what's happened? Is he hurt? Badly hurt. No. But he is no longer in any pain. Oh, <laughs> thank God for that. Oh, thank God. Thank Darling. Oh, no. No, 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 no. He was caught in the machinery. Oh! <laughs> caught in the machinery. Uh, uh, the firm wish me to convey their sincere sympathy with you in your great loss. I beg that you will understand I am only their servant and, and merely obeying orders. Yes. I was to say that Ma and Meggers disclaim all responsibility. They admit no liability at all, but in consideration of your son's services and in keeping with the contract he signed upon accepting his position... They wish to present you with a certain sum of compensation. How much? 200 pounds. Oh! Oh. Oh. In the huge new cemetery, some two miles distant, the couple buried their dead and came back to a house steeped in shadow and silence. It was all over so quickly that at first they could hardly realize it, and remained in a state of expectation, as though of something else to happen, something else which was to lighten this load too heavy for old hearts to bear. But the days passed, and the expectation gave place to resignation, the hopeless resignation of the old, sometimes miscalled apathy. Sometimes they hardly exchanged a word, for now they had nothing to talk about, and their days were long to weariness. 
It was about a week after that, Mr. White, awaking suddenly in the night, stretched his hand out and found himself alone. The room was in darkness, and the sound of subdued weeping came from the window. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> you will be cold. It is colder for my son. Please, please. You'll make yourself ill. I cannot lose you, too. All right. There now. Let me hold you. Wait! Ah! What? What? What is it? The paw! The monkey's paw. Where is it? What's the matter? I want it. Uh, you ha you've not destroyed it? It's in the parlor. Why? Oh, I only just thought of it. Why didn't I think of it before? Why didn't you think of it? Think of what? The other two wishes. We've only had one. Was not that enough? No. We will have one more. We can fix this. Go down and get it. Quickly. And wish our boy alive again. You're mad with grief. I'm not. Let's go back to bed. You don't know what you're saying. We had the first wish granted. Why not the second? A coincidence. Go and get it and wish he has now. Been, he has been dead ten days. And besides, he... I would not tell you else, but I... I could only recognize him by his clothing. If he was too terrible for you to see then, how now? Bring him back. Do you think I fear the child I've nursed? I, I... Do it! <laughs> Hurry! Oh, boy. Oh, my boy, my boy. <laughs> Mr. White went down in the darkness and felt his way to the parlor and then to the mantelpiece. The talisman was in its place and a horrible fear that the unspoken wish might bring his mutilated son before him ere he could escape from the room seized upon him and he caught his breath, <gasps> his brow cold with sweat. He felt his way around the table and groped along the wall until he found himself in the small passage with the unwholesome thing in his hand. Even his wife's face seemed changed as he entered the room. It was white and expectant and terribly calm, and to his fears seemed to have an unnatural look upon it. He was afraid of her. Wish. It is foolish and wicked. Wish. It won't be him. Wish. I wish my son alive again. Ah, what? Did it work? Did, did it move? It moved. Oh, my boy is coming home. Oh, my boy. What have I done? Mrs. White, with burning eyes, walked to the window and raised the blind. Where is he? Oh, he's not here. Oh, thank God. Mr. White sat until he was chilled with the cold glancing occasionally at the figure of his wife peering through the window. The candle end, which had burned below the rim of the candlestick, was throwing pulsating shadows on the ceiling and the walls, until with a flicker larger than the rest it expired. Mr. White, with an unspeakable sense of relief at the failure of the talisman, crept back to his bed, and a minute or two after, Mrs. White came silently and apathetically beside him. Neither spoke but lay silently listening to the ticking of the clock, a stair creaked, and the squeaky mouse scurried noisily through the wall. The darkness was oppressive, and after lying for some time, screwing up his courage, he took the box of matches and, striking one, went downstairs for a candle. At the foot of the stairs, the match went out, and he paused to strike another. What's that? A rat. A rat. It passed me on the stairs. Herbert. It's Herbert. Stop. What are you doing? Let me go. What are you going to do? What do you mean? It's my boy. What? It's Herbert. Oh what? my God. Oh, I forgot it was two miles away. Wait, wait, wait. What are you holding me for? Let go. What? I must open the door. For God's sake, don't let it in. You're afraid of your own son? <clears throat> let me go. I'm, I'm coming, Herbert. I'm coming. Wait. Let go. <clears throat> The bolt! Ugh, James, don't help me! I can't reach it! 
But her husband was on his hands and knees, groping wildly on the floor in search of the paw. If he could only find it before the thing outside got in. A perfect fusillade of knocks reverberated through the house, and he heard the scraping of a chair as his wife put it down in the passage against the door so she could reach the bolt. He heard the creaking of the bolt as it came slowly back, and at the same moment he found the monkey's paw and frantically breathed his third and last wish. The street lamp, flickering opposite, shone on a quiet and deserted road. concludes tonight's broadcast of The Monkey's Paw, adapted by Tess Burglar for our radio production from the classic short story by W.W. Jacobs. Special recognition must also be given to technical director Buddy Taylor, Evan Wilhelms for sound editing support, and Trevor Buda for writing and creating the original theme music you hear now. Ohio Shakespeare is dedicated to creating these all-original classic radio plays throughout the remainder of 2020, Look for them live on our Facebook page each month. You can also listen to them at any time thereafter on our website at www.ohioshakespeare.com. These radio plays will remain free to the public, and Ohio Shakespeare will continue to pay our collaborating artists. If you would like to support these efforts, please consider joining our Patreon. All monies raised on our Patreon platform go right back into paying local actors and playwrights to produce these all-original radio productions visit www.patreon.com slash Ohio Shakes. That's www.patreon.com slash Ohio Shakes. 